Hello everyone, this is MGTOW Jesus, aka Camel Cigarette, on the uh, game here. This is a deck submitted by USCX. He's a uh, user on Magic Duels, and I just noticed his deck list called Thrall, Thralls of Obnixilis. It's a green, black, red. And this is very similar to the black, green grudge deck that I was working on for you guys. Um, however, there's yeah, some things I would change, but four blister pods, three carrier thralls, three rot shamblers, two evolutionary leap, four altars reap, one Liliana, four Nantuko husk, two exquisite firecraft, four act of treason, two smothering abomination, two Chandra's ignition, Obnixilis, oblivion sower, and Ulamog, and 24 land, surprisingly, in this deck. Um, no fetches, nothing like that. Um, so he doesn't really reshuffle much in this deck. And, but here's something I'd like to cover real quick for you. I don't agree with Exquisite Firecraft. I get it. We're looking for that, that instant speed 4 damage or sorcery speed 4. Uh, the 2 red is what bothers me the most about this. But I'd like and see if you guys agree with me on this one here. Let me show you a little something that I think would make a little bit more sense for this deck. A... Uh, Rot Shambler benefits whenever any of our creatures die, so there's great synergy here, and there's a great benefit to using Alter's Reap. But I would say with three colors, you might as well run Radiant Flames over um, over Exquisite Firecraft. And here's what I'm going to say: it's because this is going to kill off like all the elves, the goblins, other Drazi tokens, things like that. But what I can do is I can always sack in response, you know, towards my Nantuko Hust to buff him and to Rot Shambler to buff him. So these guys could easily survive Radiant Flames. So we'll say turn one Blister Pod, right? Turn two Rot Shambler, right? And I'm just going along with the thing, and I draw this turn four or five, and he's got some stuff out. Um, what can end up happening is I could easily, you know, think, you know, let things die, sacrifice, get tokens, you know, etc. And basically, you wouldn't, you can play this if, if things aren't going your way. Maybe they're getting a faster start, and you start off with an, evol with an evolutionary leap, and you're holding Antuco Husk with nothing to really sack towards it. You're just kind of, you know, well, not getting an active play. This could be what can save you from getting overwhelmed by those elf decks. So I'll tell you what, I already know what he's trying to do with this. I'm going to put this in. Um, actually, let's go ahead and test the deck as he has it out of respect, uh, but there is something I did want to point out to USCX is um, on this here, let me see here, do, 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 do. let's go here, okay, so this is what I want to point out to you is Blight Herder, uh, is whenever you cast him, you get, you know, exile two cards, if you do, you get three 1-1 one, one Eldrazi tokens, I've been using this a lot in the different processor decks, I would say this is probably one of the best processors you could ask for, and in this deck, it would be very easy to pull off. Uh, you could easily run some early game removal. Um, like the different exile effects that we have in these colors. Uh, let's see here. In the exile effects, we've got complete disregard. I'm really surprised he's not running bone splinters. I, I This is incredibly crucial to me. This really helps handle the big muscly guys. Um, it's just amazing for one mana. Um, but anyways... Um, I would definitely consider running complete disregard. And as far as like early game, um, early game like kind of exile effects we can utilize here, uh, we don't want to go blue. Obviously, this is a great card if you ever get a chance. But in his deck here, like it's like I want that creature in here so bad, but I guess we can't really get it in there. Um, but we don't need Oblivion Sower. We just do not need Oblivion Sower. I get why you're doing it. Um, we don't. I tell you what though, if we wanted to. Um, in this regard, let's see. I would say in this deck, this deck can easily run out of hand very quickly. I would almost go so far as to say we might need to put in, um, like, Cathophid. Could be really fun for this deck. Oh, no, we have this guy here. So, you know what, let's just go ahead and try this out. I, I'm I'm just brainstorming. I just don't like Exquisite Firecraft, and that got me thinking about all sorts of tweaks, and I'm just getting out of hand. So I'm going to go ahead and give this deck a shot against some unsuspecting victim. Uh, but yeah, um, the deck is pretty pretty cool. Let's see if I can put this in the camera for you. Yeah, this is... Oops, I'm sorry. Yeah, this is this deck here. Um, Thralls of Obnixilis, 4 Blister Pod, 3 Rot Shambler, the Illusionary Elite, Far Beyond, uh, From Beyond, which I'm still considering. Uh, Carrier Thrall, Alter's Reap, which I don't think needs to be 4. I think 2 to 3 is fine. 
Um, Nintuko Husk, Smothering Abomination, Obnixilis, Exquisite Firecraft, which I don't think needs to be that. Chandra's Ignition, that's fine. I get it. Uh, Ulamog's Sower, I, or Oblivion Sower, I just I don't know. Um, Ulamog's fine, always. Um, but for having 24 land in the deck, in a deck where its curve is like... 4, 5. Alright, so we're on the play here. Nope. <laughs> um, oh, okay, yeah, this is great. I like this already. This is a great hand. The question is, do you go turn one blister pot, or do you play this so that way you have turn two access to carrier thrall? In the grand scheme of things, going turn two carrier thrall will still get the same damage output as blister pod. But I'll probably top deck what I need, so I'm just going to go ahead and put this out there. Because if it dies, you know, I still have that extra mana that can help me ra ramp into From Beyond. <coughs> Hmm. All right. There's another forest. Um, beats for one. Jund is one of my favorite three-color pies. I absolutely love playing Jund. I really do. Uh, so it's always nice to see someone make a Jund build in in a type of. I mean, actually, I probably love this deck already because. I've been playing around with black, green, sacrifice effects, and rot shambler, and to see someone take it to a jund effect and go ahead and put a little bit of the treachery mechanic in here, it's just, yeah, it's a lot of fun. That's cool. So in this regard, we're gonna go ahead and beat. This guy kept a one land hand. That is insane, sir. I could. Uh, I'm just go ahead and do this. I was going to use Alter's Reap to sacrifice that at the end of this turn. Uh, to draw two cards, have a token now, the 1, 2, 3, 4 mana available, and then with two more cards in hand, and then untap and be able to most likely play from beyond. Um, but right now, with the way he's going, I'm just going to go ahead and get early game damage in, and we'll deal with it later. There we go, problem solved anyway. Let's go ahead and beach for three. Alright. Perfect. And he does that damage there. I get the token. No damage is dealt this turn, but I cast from beyond. I'll just go ahead and do that. So yeah, it's wildly effective. I mean, I, I mean, these two creatures are one of my favorite one and two drops right now, just because they could do stuff like that. It's a lot of fun. Um, but see, this is why I don't like Exquisite Firecraft. Let's say he was just having a great play out, and we were dealing with elves or something. This isn't going to help me, you know. Um, and look at my board state, you know. And, it, and my board state can always come back, so I would much rather run Radiant Flames. Now, I'm not saying that when this game is over, I don't burn him for four for the win. I probably will. I mean, I'm just going to use the cards I'm dealt, but, <laughs> you know, what do you do? <clears throat> so, we're going to go ahead and do Ningtuko Husk right now. Uh, yep. And the next turn, if everything goes well, I'll just play Liliana and sack Ningtuko Husk to itself. <coughs> I think I can do that. <coughs> Excuse me. Alright. Now, there's an Eldrazi I would highly recommend. It's the 5 drop. 3 and 2 black and a green for a 3 3 that makes a dude, that makes a scion when it enters the battlefield. Most importantly, a black and a green sacrifice a creature. Target creature gets minus 2, minus 2. I've been playing with that a lot, and it has been phenomenal. It has been absolutely phenomenal. Okay. See, here, I would just exquisite, I would Radiant Flames, sack these to make them a 6-6, six, six. I would clear the board, right, so I'd sack these, make them a 6-6, six, six. I'd Radiant Flames for 3, and I'd swing in for 6. So, this is why I want this to be Radiant Flames, because right now it's not, it's not going to do me any good, and this would just be for SNGs, you know, it's for fun. Uh, so, I could race out Liliana, and then sacrifice him, and blah, blah, blah. But what we're gonna do first is we're gonna attack. He 
He already knows what I'm gonna do. Um, yeah. Drop carrier thrall. <coughs> that way, I have multiple sources for Nantuko. And with Liliana, I mean, you don't necessarily even have to flip Liliana. This deck doesn't want to discard its hand, to be honest with you. Once I've got Abomination, maybe, but until then. Come on, man, you're just making my Radiant Flames argument even better. It's possible we may not even have it yet. I don't know. Okay. So on this turn, this could be kind of broken. I think I've got an idea here. This could make things absolutely ridiculous. Now. I do like the Nantuko Husk, I do. I'm going to go ahead and let her flip. Since I'm going to be killing the only blocker, that, that our only attacker that could be a problem for her this uh, next turn. So let's go ahead and do that. Aw, oh, yeah. Nom 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 nom. And now what I can do is I can start making everyone discard. He's got five cards in hand. I don't want to bring anything back right now, because I want to get her up a little bit. So... We'll go ahead and get rid of an ignition. We're not going to use it until the most crucial moment. No. Honestly, ignition's going to be the one that kills him. Firecraft isn't. I'm just going to let this go. Because what I'm going to do is if I draw a second red, I'm going to win next turn. The way I'm going to do that is I'll sack all these guys, Chandra's ignition targeting him, and then he'll be an 8-8. And then he'll deal 8 damage to everything and him, and then swing for 8. Okay. <clears throat> and he just tapped out, so I don't have to worry about burn, bounce, counter magic, whatever. I don't have to worry about any of those instant speed reactions. I just really want that second red mana. That's all I need right now. <sighs> I'll find it this way. I'll just go ahead and do it this way. This deck is surprisingly synergistic. I'm surprised I haven't seen this before. It's playing very well. Um, yeah. We'll just go like that. I should keep that for one more combo piece. I just need one of these for the combo piece. So just in case he does do something crazy, I'll have another one to do the combo with. But I'm pretty confident this game is over. Just need that red mana. But let me tell you something. Never assume the game is over when they have an untapped island. <laughs> I've learned that years ago. Okay, so... Really? Okay. Let him resolve first. Yeah, the reason I did that was I don't want to stack and then him bolt it and laugh and What he's trying to do right now is make it to where this will end up sacrificing him or whatever, which is completely intelligent. That's that's a right that's the right move to make. Fortunately for him, oh, this makes a dude first. Oh, that is nice. Thank you. I don't know how the resolution changed itself, but um, earlier I was having this sacrifice. Then this was making a dude. That was ticking me off. All right, so here's how we're gonna do it. I need a little bit more fodder just for S and Gs. Let's go ahead and bring Carrier Thrall back. Let's 
We'll sack this. Makes a dude a draw card. This gets plus two plus two. Sack a dude. Draw a card. It's a six six. Um Sack a dude. Now he's an 8 8. So now what I could easily do is Chandra's Ignition, targeting him, deal 8 to everything, swing 8. Yep, GG. So this is a very fun deck. It played incredibly well. Uh, lots of draw power to get to my threats in my end game. Very impressed with this deck, US. This is a very good deck, sir played well. Um, the hand flow was good. The only thing I'm saying is there could be a little bit of tweak as far as the land is concerned, but I, well, no, the land seems fine. It's just I really think you should run Radiant Flames. I really think you should. Because if things are going bad, um, then you'll be able to have that option. So let's go into the deck real quick. I mean, I could have probably maximized my turns a little bit more, but I mean, I saw right what he wanted to do. Now, I understand what Alter's Reap is for. And for those of you who don't know, um, in the way that you cast a spell, you select your targets and such, so like you have to have a creature out to, to cast it. Well, if you change, if you hit control and you change the way you pay for it, you can actually, the, the creature that you choose to sacrifice can be the token, okay? So, and then you can use the token to pay for the spell. You just had to select that, that this is the creature I'm sacrificing, not pay one to black, cast spell, sacrifice creature. It's Select the creature you're going to sacrifice, the chosen creature that's that's to be dead, and then you can then use it as part of the cost of one of black. So, Alter's Reap can cost you one black mana and an Eldrazi Scion token, essentially. So, if you have an Eldrazi Scion and a black mana, you know, don't think you have to give up two creatures to play it. You know, oh, oh man, i got to sack the Scion and I need another creature and I don't want to sacrifice this guy or whatever. No, you can use the token to do it. So I'm going to make a little tweak here, if, you know, out of respect. This is, you know, my deck. I'm going to be making it mine. So um, I'm definitely going to keep this around. It's a lot of fun. I will name it USCX just for uh, that way I know what it is. And I really don't see the need for Oblivion Sower. I just don't. I'm sorry. I would much rather uh, utilize something else in here. Like Perilous Mirror having death effects is very effective for this deck, I think. Um, but we're in Jund Colors. Why we're not running Omnath, you know what I mean? We're in Jund Colors, and if I have an instant speed sack effect, and I'm making 5-5s, five I mean, let's say the game goes long, they're playing a control deck, I drop Omnath, okay, I play a land, get a dude, I've taught, you know, I've got Nantuko Husk in hand, who knows what happens, I could then sacrifice to this guy an instant speed lightning bolt, pow, 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 you know what I mean? So, that's an option. But... I like what he's doing with uh, with Act of Treason. I'm going to keep that around. I haven't played with it in a while. Um, but, like, you have direct damage with Blazing Hellhound. But this is the guy I want to talk about. 3-3 three, three, uh, Brood Hutcher. Brood Butcher. Uh, three black and a green. You get a 3-3 three, three that, that generates a 1-1 one, one colorless dude. Um, what's cool is, well, black and a green, sack a creature, target creature gets minus 2, minus 2. This has been incredibly effective in, this, in my decks. Uh, I've been using it a lot. I did use it in my grudge deck, and it has pulled out the win for me. It is two sources. I mean, you're basically getting four power for five mana, but you're getting an instant speed sacrifice engine that also allows you to control to crucial moments, uh, making things weaker at the right moment, uh, taking away their attack power, protect your guys, whatever it is that you want to do. Uh, so I'm going to put him in. I'm going to put him in, and I took out the sower. I really think this might be a better A. It brings down our mana curve. One, and what two cards did I just take out? Interesting. Oh yeah, that's right, one Alter's Reap. You don't need four, you, you don't. I, I get what he's doing, it's consistent, and he wants to draw. Um, but I'm telling you, the Brood Butcher is just, oh, so crucial. So let's try this out now, hopefully we'll get to see a chance to, hopefully we'll actually get to use the, the cards we tweaked. But as you can see, like, I just, I don't like, I don't like Chandra's uh, Exquisite Firecraft in a deck that's running multiple colors. It's a very red intensive spell. I understand what it's for. I understand it kills some crucial things. But <clears throat> and and it can negate fog, because you can cast it on your turn and say damage can't be prevented this turn, but I think it says it can't be prevented, not all damage for the rest of the turn. 
so it doesn't make you immune to fog. There are cards that like that. Um, okay, so we got the Brood Butcher. We're going to be able to play with that later. I don't like this hand, though. I didn't get much action. Alright, I'm on the draw. This is clunky. Alright. Okay, so turn one Cinder Glade, obviously. Because I can, un I can play an untapped cemetery next. Man, these guys just get in my hand, don't they? <laughs> I really don't want you right now. Can I see you on turn six or seven? <clears throat> okay. Hmm. Could just be an elf deck. I mean, he might not even be using the white. Just wants the one drop. I don't know. Well, that'll be useful. But that's the other thing is Brood Butcher plus Far Beyond, so From Beyond. So able to continuously generate a dude that you could use as a minus two, minus two. I mean, it's kind of like that Blightcaster creature. That four drop, two, three, that whenever you cast an enchantment spell, target creature gets minus two, minus two. So... Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I am so playing this carrier thrall so hard right now. Huh. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> I hope he's playing rock elves. I love rock elves. Yes, he's playing rock elves. Oh, my, or Abzan elves, as some of you. Good, someone's doing that. Oh, that's awesome. That is awesome. Oh, you're a douche. You, you're a douche nugget. Alright, we'll do this. Let me generate my bra. Yeah. Could've used that land, though. Well, I have five mana. <coughs> um... Yeah, you knew I wasn't going to. You smarty. Mr. Smarty Pants. Alright, here we go. Fourth land. Oh, okay. We're doing that. We're doing that thing. See, so one, two, three, four, five. Puts me to ten. Start generating guys. Nantuko plus guy generation equals slow removal. Okay. I was really hoping that I would have drawn a land. I would have played Brood Butcher to make the three, three to can't, you know, to fight off these guys and the one, one token to keep the flow going. So. <clears throat> but. I guess right now we're just going to have to play the long game. I'm going to probably get very low in life total here really fast. I am half expecting him to play uh, that black green elf that gives me life loss. So I expect him to play that and make me lose four life here. Well, yeah, he's probably looking for it now. Okay. There we go. So now we have a continuous source that we'll be able to sacrifice and start whittling this off. Sometimes with these decks, you got to go into an attrition mode. So remember, gentlemen, play the cards that you have and play them the way they're supposed to be played. What's really fun is when you play something in a way it wasn't intended, i.e., eh, for an example, the common instant that gives target creature plus two plus two and you get to play it and put a, put a land from your hand into play, that new card. What's really cool is when you swing in with your... 1-1 uh, one, one blister pod on turn 2. You swing with your blister pod, they block it with their 0-2 gate creeper, you buff their gate creeper to kill your pod, you play an extra land, you've got a token, then the next turn you've got the token, you've now got 3 land on the board, you play your 4th mana, you've got 5 mana on turn 3. And they're like, that's not how that card's supposed to be used. It's like, well, I'm using it my own way. But play the hand you're dealt. That's the only thing I can say. You just gotta play the hand you're dealt. Okay, so guys, in this situation, we've got 6 mana available. This is when you say, oh, you could play Oblivion, sorry. Okay, I could board wipe, too. And he can just sack his dudes off in response. I could play Oblivion Butcher, or Brood Butcher, and have two dudes and a 3-3, which would stop him. 
I could play into Go Husk here once again, which could stop him. So here's what I'm going to do. I only need to deal two damage. So if I sacrifice, I could wipe and then play Husk. Yeah, I only need to deal two. This is going to die regardless. Let's go ahead and get the mana. Oh, I need the red and the green. There we go. Two damage, sir. There we go. <clears throat> so a red, a green, a colorless. Yeah, he's going to sack in response. That's fine. But now I have three mana available. Ooh, very nice. One, two, three, four, five. This could get a little ridiculous. Evolution. All right. Cool. So we got rid of those. Now we play the husk. And so next turn, I'll have a token generated, brood butcher, and another token. That'll give me three creatures on the board. Well, I'll probably have to sack one if I don't draw a land. But so I'll have. At the end of it all, if I don't draw a land, I'll have an Eldrazi token and a brood butcher. And I'll have so that'll give him two sources to play around with. And I'll keep generating guys here. Cool. So he's gonna use this, go destroy this. Hey, it is what it is, man. Woodland Bellower is pretty good. It isn't basically aside from Woodland Bellower, his like whole deck is full of creatures he can tutor. More power to you, man. More power to you. Alright. Hey! There you are. <clears throat> As you all know, this deck, this game can change with the draw of a mountain. If I draw a mountain, and I sack this, you know, and I do all this nonsense, I'm going to board wipe for six and then swing for six. I'll put him to eight and he'll have no but he has a whole hand. So we're not right now we're just hoping for a second red mana. This is why I think I wanted to tweak the lands a little bit. because um, turn one is not crucial to this deck. Uh blister pod's nice, but turn one is not crucial. So this is where I'd much rather play an evolutionary leap and say or not evolutionary leap, I'm sorry. Um, evolving wilds. And based on what's in my hand, if I need to go ahead and secure the mountain, because I've got dual lands that are red, but go ahead and secure the mountain and play another land and blah, 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 or at least secure the second black, secure whatever it is I need. Uh, I think Evolutionary Leap, turn one, is very good in this format right now, in this metagame. But this was the reason why I wanted some spot removal in here, and but that's why we have Radiant Flames. I'm more of a mid-range player myself. So and this deck isn't giving me enough sources to utilize this mid-range. Yeah. You have an asshole. Okay, so coming in puts me to two. Ah. Uh, block. That's what's four. I mean, he doesn't have trample, thankfully. Oh. Okay, so I could active treason his 6 5. Swing both at him. And I can sacrifice it to kill off one of these. That's what I'm going to I mean, they're not going to deal it damage regardless, so. Oh. Thank, thank you? Wow, you should have just double blocked, because they were going to be dead either way. So now here we... Minus two, minus two. GG. hey <laughs> Wow, I would have just double blocked. I would have just double blocked because it doesn't matter. Even if I sack a guy in response, it's like, it doesn't matter. Because Obnixus would still be alive. And he would be drawing an additional another card. He'd be drawing three cards this turn, not instead of two. 
and then Omnixus will be on the minus three effect. All right, get your Liliana on, girl. Get your Liliana. <sighs> oh wow! Oh wow! <laughs> this guy. I've already, I already like this deck. I've been wanting to build an Abzan, and I've been having a, a bit of trouble because I don't know what to do with white. Ah. Uh... Ah, oh, this is not good. Oh, come on. I need board presence. Oh, man. The next turn is going to be Chandra. Or, no, I'm sorry, Nissa. Ah. Oh. I guess I'll just have to beats for three and he'll block it. Yeah. I can't play the land any discard fodder. Come on, second red. It wouldn't even be that great right now, but it would just be nice. <laughs> And because this doesn't target opponents, I can't redirect the damage from Chandra's Ignition to blow out other Planeswalkers. Which would be hilarious. But no. All in all, though, I, I am impressed with this deck. I really am. And one of these Brood Butchers would have been the 6-drop that I still wouldn't be able to play. or Well, I would have played, but it really wouldn't have helped. And the other one would be an Alter's Reap. So maybe with two extra cards and extra land from him, who knows what it could be. I'll tell you what, though. Brood Butcher did pretty much clear the board. And holds a constant element of, of control. And it sacrificed his Bellaware, right? So, all in all, I guess six of one, half dozen of the other, right? Oh, I like that guy. That is one of my favorite three drops. Ooh, doesn't do nothing. Come on. I guess here we, uh... Does he have Death Touch? No. Okay. I guess we attack Liliana. Yeah, there's really not much else I can do. Oh, this is tough, man. This is rough. I'm not mad. I'm actually glad to see an Abzan deck. I haven't seen one, and I've been trying to brew one, and, and this guy's giving me some inspiration here. He's going off of an early game like Elf Presence, followed by late game control. Or late game, you know... I mean, just lay on the Planeswalkers, right? <laughs> Could really use a second red mana, though. Boom. Two, six for four... Oh, no. Uh, I'm going to lose two life regardless, and it'll be lethal. So, yeah. I mean, this as will show the kind of interaction this deck can give you. I mean, he casts it, he makes a token, and then he gets three life, two damage. Yeah, it's over. So... Uh, yeah, he got this game. You got this game fair and square. Come on in for beats. You win. Yep, nothing I can do about that. Okay, so I'll give it one more game. Because um, it's one win one, lose one. 
Yeah, my level is so low because I, I test out so much stuff. I don't like playing against the AI. It doesn't give me the right kind of test that I need. Um, I was like a 40 for the longest time on the other game, and then I lost a few rounds, and I stopped playing, and uh, then the season ended, so I ended with a 36. I wanted to have a perfect end, uh, ending with 40s. Um, but, you know, what do you do? All right. Last game. All right, Dalius, Dalius, Dal, Dal, Dalius. I don't know. He's playing over sixty cards, and we have a terrible hand. Yes, more playable. Another Chandra's damn. Like, I get why we're playing Ignition. It won me the first game. It just board wiped and swung for lethal. It's great. But man, this deck does not like to get too red. <laughs> Beats for one. What's funny is, um, in one of the games where I was playing Blister Pods and stuff, I actually did a, uh, I used Radiant Flames to board wipe and created, like, three Eldrazi tokens, so it basically paid for itself, and I turned around and cast, like, a six-cost creature after that. Um, so I can't sacrifice this. Well, I don't know if I can. I don't have an artifact to destroy, so... I would just hit Cancel. And, well, maybe... I don't know. Testing. You know who I haven't seen? I haven't seen Rot Shambler. That would make the game more interesting, wouldn't it? Yeah, see, there's no legal target. Okay, so now we know, guys. You can't just willy sacrifice. I already kind of knew that, but I wasn't sure how this game liked to play it. Because it wasn't a May effect. It's a... Uh... Pre, you know, you have to choose a legal target when you sa then sacrifice. So I already, I already knew that. That was probably a huge waste, considering I'd ha I have like jump blockers for days. <sighs> oh, oh. damn! Uh, that would have been even more fun. Probably gonna lose the game just on that stupid play. Could be the deciding factor here. Because if he's playing auras, he's most likely playing um, Sigil of the Empty Throne. And as we all know, <laughs> that's that's hell. Okay, so this isn't gonna be enough. Let's just let him play out some more weenies, if he has more weenies to play. Yeah, this is a problem. I really wish I could take that and sacrifice it to destroy the enchantment and then it fizzles. Man, this is not good. Uh, yeah. Go ahead and tap one. Going to 14. I might just have to use Radiant Flames this turn. Yeah, it looks like I might have to. So, we'll Beats in for two. Well, yeah. Alright, we'll beat him for two. We'll play Radiant Flames, and we will follow this 
So that'll get rid of him. And we'll make a token for chump block. Come on, Liliana. Nothing I can do with her now. What's there for? I mean, top end, I only need five mana anyway, but I need the colors. I don't have two red, and I don't have two black. So you can see by testing this and showing this to you that I really want to fix the land in this deck. I like, really want to fix the land in this deck. Well, I'll be losing three life a turn now. Because if he attacks out, I take three, four, five, six, and then I gain two, so I'll be taking four life a turn. So if nothing changes, I'm still at like a three turn clock. Oh, okay, never mind. This game's over. Yep. So, five more this turn. Let's get an eight, and then I die next turn, because I'll drop to seven, and then he'll swing for three, four, five, six. So, even if I draw... I need to draw a beefy creature. Which I just... I know I won't. Yeah. See, that's the trick, is I could play this, and then Chandra's Ignition, I need a second red. So what am I going to do? Chandra's Ignition for two, kill off these, and take lethal? <laughs> so yeah, he's lit up, which means he can sacrifice to himself. Alright. Infernal Scarring. Yeah, it's over. He has... Yeah. Alright. So, I'm going to go in here and tweak some things on this deck real quick. I like it. I like what he's done. I see the synergy, and I enjoy the gameplay. I am going to say that there needs to be some serious tweaks done here. So, this is what I believe we should change. And it's going to sound crazy, but we're going to go look at the lands. Real quick. And right away, you'd think with three mountains, two and two... To, to, I mean, it, it should be fine, right? Why is it not giving me the second red? Well, the reason is, we don't shuffle. And so whatever we're being delivered, I mean, we, we don't, we rarely get a chance to really dig through this deck. So whatever's being delivered upon the original shuffle is pretty much what we're stuck with. And I'm not a big, I'm not a fan of that, ever. Never a fan of that. So right away, I would say Evolving Wilds is absolutely crucial in this deck. Perhaps only two, you know? I mean, I think that that's very important. And red is crucial. It's almost as crucial as the black is, isn't it? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tweak down the ones that come into play tapped more often, which is going to be Cinderglade and Dragon Skull Summit. And by having the Evolving Wilds, I'll be able to grab the second black when I need it, or the second red when I need it. That, that, I think, alone is just going to change the way this deck plays. It's going to be it's gonna sound crazy, but I believe that might just do it. Uh, Ultra's Reap at 3. Maybe this deck does need to be 4. But I haven't even seen Rot Shambler either. Radiant Flames, definite keeping that switch. I'm sorry. Um, yes, it does kill my own uh, Brood Butcher. But uh, chances are, if I have to play it, there's a reason. <laughs> you know? I'm okay with that. If I have Brood Butcher in play and I still need to use Radiant Flames, I've probably already lost anyway. Um, and most likely I'll sack it to the Nantuko Husk anyway. And uh, Smothering Abomination does die to Radiant Flames as well. Act of Treason, we're going to keep these. Um, from Beyond, we're going to keep that. We need that continuous source. Ulamog, the Ceaseless Hunger. Uh, well, okay. There's, it's a, it's a catch-22. The way this deck is playing is, I don't want to see a lot of land anyway. I want to see a nice balance of about 5 mana and threats. So I don't want to get to 10 land. And then if I'm drawing a crap ton of land, I'm probably dead before I get a chance to play Ulamog because I don't have as much interaction with my opponent as I'd like. All right? This is pretty much all me, me, me here. And Aside from the occasional act of treason, I don't interact with my opponent. I don't kill their stuff. I don't instant speed react to anything they play. I have no instance in this deck. Not a single one. 
And remember, guys, Exquisite Firecraft is still a sorcery, so even if I went that route, um, I'd still have no interaction with my opponent. None. There is no interaction here. There's, there's you know, responsive stuff, um, but that's it. That is absolutely it. You know, aside from, like, Brood Butcher. So, without Brood Butcher, we didn't have, we didn't have that, you know? So that leaves me a spot open. And I'll tell you what we're going to do. It's going to sound really crazy, but we might need to run Languish. I'm just saying. Um, hmm. Guilt Leaf Winterwear, another 5 drop we could utilize. Requires a second black, though. Let's do this. Let's do... Let's do Nyssa. Why? Well, I'll tell you why. A, she digs again. She gets me that extra card. All right, let's, let's slip her over. So we're going to be able to get that extra card and race out of land, which can really be nice if we're trying to do Chandra's Ignition. Uh, we can make a 4-4, which, once again, will be able to generate another token for us. And, of course, late game, she can win the game all by herself. So I like her. The other thing is, oops, the other thing is for two and a green, being able to secure another forest, but most importantly, not missing a land drop, but not drawing a land. You see what I'm saying? So we're not having to uh, waste crucial turns on that. We can instead make a 2-2 body, which we could then use for whatever reason, secure another land drop. Even if I don't flip her, it's no big deal. But I could. You know what I'm saying? So I think this might help the deck a little bit more. And I'll tell you what, I know this video is a bit long, but let's go ahead and do one more battle with it. I'll tell you what, though, I am going to change the name of it. Just for, you know, respect for to USCX. Um, let's see, it's a Jund look. Uh, uh, why not? Ooh, I like this, this look for it. Got that nice pink background to it. Alright, USCX. Uh, Jund Sacrifice. Alright, buddy. So let's take this out for a spin. And this will be my last my last game with it. But you've definitely given me a shell to think about. You've definitely given me uh, something to go on here. Like I said, I like how you've done it. I really want to see Rot Shambler, and I, and I really want to see that getting better and bigger and then being able to like wipe the board with a sex six rock shambler and ha huh. a lot of times I think I could have taken those games back had I done you know maybe things a little differently but I'm gonna play this one as best I can for you guys. So let's see. Alright, starting off uh, Well, asking you shall receive, I guess, right? <laughs> We've got raw shamblers for days. Yeah, I'm kind of a completionist. I like to foil my stuff out. All right. In. Followed up with another Rot Shambler. Alright. This guy's in for a treat. I'm just gonna swing for one this turn because I can get so much more damage in by not sacrificing this right away. It's 
It's about time we saw Rod Shambler. Gosh. Claustrophobia. What's he targeting? Okay. Kudos. Very nice. Okay. So here we can secure another land drop, right? Let's go ahead and do that. We'll just secure the land drop, and then we'll be able to play the Blister Pod, which will give us more fodder. Now, in some rare situations, if the game's late and I draw her, she'll help me get that 7th mana. So I'll swing with Rot Shambler. That was dumb. I should have not done that. too liberal there. I'll just do a little bit of damage. But this turn I could have swung to 10 plus 6, 16 putting him to 2 if I had sacked these other two and he was available. So yeah, it's very lethal. And not even, not even, I'm not even playing double Rot Chandler. I'm holding it back. So I still have 5 mana available, that's why I didn't sack this last one, because if I don't draw a land, I want to play Obnixilis. And I'm pretty confident I don't have to worry about it. Yeah, he's going to lock down this guy. Um, I don't have enchantment removal in this deck, so... I just don't want him to have more auras out, because, you know... It just guys Clean up the board. Alright, so we can play Obnixilis and start drawing cards. And we'll get in for two. Making flyers. Very nice. Dang it. Let's draw first. I want a red just because. Oh, I forgot. That's why I should have kept that out. It would have been great evolutionary leap fodder. Ah, uh, you win some, you lose some, right? Uh, let's see. I'll probably. Let's play evolutionary leap first. Fought up with Carrier Thrall. No, Rot Shambler. Get her forced in play. So in this situation here, I've got the option to sack this, to make him bigger and tutor for another creature. Ow. Owie! Yeah. Makes sense. I'm bringing him down. Oh, Jesus. No. Ow, oh, shit. I hate when I do that. That was my bad. Oh, I really need a red mana. There we go. Ask and ye shall receive. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, I guess I'll evolutionary leap now, which I would have done at the end of his turn, but I didn't because I was zoomed in on it. Because I'm an idiot. I really hate doing videos like this and then not playing the deck as best I can because then, you know, then you guys say, well, if you played it right. So, let me just, uh, let me fix my mistake here. Um, I guess I'll get a more pressuring board presence. Something that he probably can't deal with. 
on, in all fairness, I don't need to dig for creatures right now. So I'm going to go ahead and extend. And I'll beats for three. So next turn I'll play Cinderglade, which will flip her, and then I can board wipe. He's going to survive another attack anyway, so... Um, yeah, that's fine. Just take the two then. I'll pull this back out, don't worry. Alright, five mana. Making dudes. Please, overextend. By all means. Yep. Okay. So this is why, once again, this is why we played Radiant Flames, guys. So I'm going to go ahead and drop the land. So she flips. She gets out of the way. Right? I could put her up, but let's do the math here real quick. Perhaps another fodder token. Yeah, so we're going to put her down. And here's what we're going to do. We know he doesn't have instant speed bounce in this deck, so we'll convert his power over to him. Okay, so that should make it a 5-5, five, five, and then I'm going to have a 6-6. Six, six. I can't do math. I have an 8-8, eight, eight. I can't remember. <laughs> Just did it all. Cool. So now we do this, and then we do this for 3. And we swing lethal. But see, that's why I played Radiant Flames. Once again, that's why we played Radiant Flames. And Nissa did a fine job, too. So, Well... I hope that uh, these, swipe, these slight tweaks helped you out. I will almost take out a, one of the uh, swamps for another Evolving Wilds just because I really want to make sure that I hit the colors I need. So I hope that was a great video for you guys. If you liked it, uh, share, subscribe. If you didn't, you know, leave your comments below. And obviously I'm not perfect. I did misplay quite a bit. Um, but I've got some other things on my mind I need to take care of. So I hope that you enjoyed it. And uh, as always, man... Stay MGTOW, stay free, and uh, I'll see you guys on the tables. All right, until then.